through. If it's okay, before we take questions, if you're interested in joining our grassroots campaign, there are a couple of things I want to just make sure you know we've got here. There are these cards, um, palm cards, which you have. There's some information about the campaign on here. There's also a website where you can learn a lot more about um, positions I've taken. You can see media interviews I've done. Um, I take pride in the fact that I, I am uh, trying to be thoughtful and informed about policy positions I take. I think um, if you look at our website versus the other Democratic candidates in this race and the thoroughness of the policy proposals that are on the website, um, there is a big difference. Um, there's also an email address on here. I recognize that I don't know everything. Uh, one of the neat things about doing what I'm doing right now is I'm meeting lots of people across the state and learning a lot. If we don't talk about something tonight that you care about or think I need to know, please send me an email. It will ultimately make me a better informed candidate and a better governor at the end of the day. There's also a sign-in sheet that we will pass around while we're doing Q&A. If you sign it, it doesn't mean you're swearing to God you're going to support our campaign. It just means you'll be on our email list and can keep up with um, what's going on with the campaign. If I have earned your support tonight, there are also pledge cards, these little cards that Kevin is holding up. Um, please fill one out and let us know that you're on our team. And give it back to us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Really, music to our ears, the second this kind of thing. So I think Paul really would like to capture your voices for the Q&A, so we will pass the microphone around if you've got a question. Um, and, if anybody, and I'll start with the uh, safe patient limits because that's a huge concern here in the Berkshire. So, how do you feel about there? Say, I believe we got it. We got enough signatures to get it past the first hurdle to get something on the ballot about safe patient limits. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I also signed it. They did a great job. MNA did a great job um, getting the, the signatures. I think at pretty much every event I've been at over the last few months across the entire state, there were people gathering signatures. So I um, signed it, I think, maybe 45 different times every time they asked. Um, and I do think this is something that um, uh, has been an issue in a number of different um, healthcare settings. I actually worked in the healthcare industry, as you may see from uh, the card. I was CEO of a health insurance company that covered low-income people in the Medicaid program for the last four years. I worked in public policy um, in healthcare uh, areas when I was in state government. I was chair of the board of the Health Connector. Um, for three and a half years when we implemented Massachusetts Health Reform. So I've engaged a lot in the healthcare industry and with the healthcare industry. Um, and uh, I do believe that um, we, need, we need to ensure that uh, there isn't cost cutting going on that is compromising the health and safety of patients. And I do think this is a, a worthwhile, um, a worthwhile uh, uh, issue that we need to support. Other questions? I don't know if we're the only state that does this, but why do we tax unemployment benefits? I think we should not do that. There are people who uh, rely on that money, and they have to pay taxes on it. And in addition, I think, uh, I'm wondering about sanctuary cities. I think they should be encouraged, because uh, we got this card in the mail that Pittsfield welcomes all illegal immigrants. This is a right-wing group that put this out, and they spent a lot of money on it. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a big problem. So, on the first question about um, why do we tax unemployment benefits, um, I honestly did not, did not know that we did. And that's something I think I, I want to get smarter about to understand, um, to the extent that's happening today in Massachusetts, why it's happening, what the rationale is behind it. And to the extent it's something you know um, a lot about, I'd be interested in... in uh, and your thoughts about it, but I want to get better educated about that before um, uh, opining. On the sanctuary city question, so Mass Fiscal Alliance is the organization that you're referring to. What's your name, sir? Hugh Black. So um, the organization Hugh's referring to is Mass Fiscal Alliance, and they've sent out mailings across um, the entire state. Uh, and uh, when it comes to sanctuary cities, uh, or the issue that is sometimes referred to as sanctuary cities or sanctuary state. The very first piece of legislation I supported as a candidate for governor is the Safe Communities Act. It's the first candidate to support it. I've been 100% uh, behind it. I've spoken at rallies uh, in support of it. Um, uh, Senator Jamie Eldridge, one of the most progressive senators in the state, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, who was the lead sponsor of it and, and big proponent of it, 
One of the reasons he endorsed me last week for governor is because of my strong position on the Safe Communities Act. So I believe, and for those who don't know, what this legislation does is basically says state and local law enforcement resources should be focused on enforcing state and local laws and not doing the work of federal immigration officials, which is not their job. Particularly now, when we've got a president who's asking his federal immigration officials to do things that, in my view, are inconsistent with the values of our country. Um, I was, when I was in western Massachusetts, this was not the Berkshires, but, um, and I know there's a distinction. <laughs> west, west of Boston, Massachusetts, I was in Northampton um, uh, early in my campaign, in the spring. There was a Young Democrats um, event, and they had a lot of elected officials um, at that event and some candidates. And uh, one of the Young Democrats was a student named Adam, a college student who stood up and wanted to know, of the elected legislators and others who were there, what they were going to do about the fact that his family, two Muslim uh, immigrant parents who are undocumented, um, is, was afraid to leave their house and was scared to death about what Donald Trump was doing and uh, their ability to continue to be members of our community. And one thing, one of many things that I am very frustrated with Governor Baker about is he has not advocated on behalf of everyone in our community. And he has not sent the right signals at a time when we desperately need them. He does not support the Safe Communities Act. He is not sending a signal that everyone in our state is welcome and included and that he and their government is there for every single person. Adam and his parents are human beings who are members of our community, who uh, are contributing to our community, and who are right now, thanks to our president and our federal government, uh, in great fear. And they're, they're immigrants across our state who are feeling this way right now. And as governor, I would want to be crystal clear about the fact that I am their governor too. And I am not going to contribute to uh, what the federal government is doing to put them in fear and make them feel like they are not members of our community. It's okay to applaud, by the way, if you'd like to say something. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. <laughs> we need to reinforce it. Hi. Hi. What is your name? Katya. Katya. Nice to meet you. So I'd like to know when you talked about transportation, what's your vision for transportation for Massachusetts? I know that in a previous life, I lived in the Boston suburbs yeah. and commuted into work using the T um, or the commuter rail, either option. And I know that when it worked well, I could reasonably expect to get to work on time. And when it didn't work well, it was anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours late getting to work. So I've seen that system and I see that there's really not much in, way, in terms of a public transportation system out here in the Berkshires, yep. not in Western Mass. Yep. So that's a big concern for a lot of people out here who can't drive for one reason or another. So I'd like to hear what your vision is for transportation. Thank you for the question. Um, so Transportation is, a, is one of the fundamental responsibilities of government. Transportation infrastructure to help people get around. It's one of the things that um, when you talk to business leaders, they care most about. Uh, and it is one of the things we are doing the worst at in Massachusetts. We have starved our transportation system of revenue for decades, in part because Charlie Baker, when he had the job I used to have in the state government back under the Weld administration, um, was plugging holes in the big dig finance plan by basically robbing money from transportation infrastructure needs across the rest of the state from the T, from the turnpike before everybody else. So we've got a huge backlog of needs, let alone making some of the transformational type investments we could and should make that would make a meaningful difference across this entire state. So first and foremost, I would be honest about the fact that we need additional revenue to invest in our transportation system. Governor Baker has not been honest about that. He continues to maintain we don't need more revenue, that all we need to do is manage the system better. And to him what that has meant um, when it comes to the T 
is jacking up fares on riders beyond what was planned, uh, and the T and other RTAs around the state. Um, cutting service, uh, privatizing systems, and reducing investment in road and bridge projects across the entire state. So that is exactly the wrong direction. We're right now we're 45th in the country when it comes to the condition of our transportation infrastructure across the state, and 47th when it comes to commute times. We have to do better. We have to. And you know, part of what I understand in, in uh, Pittsfield, as an example, is that the RTA um, does not provide round-the-clock service or service past six o'clock. One of your um, economic drivers is tourism. Pittsfield is um, making an active uh, uh, effort to become uh, part of the broader uh, tourism industry and part of the arts and culture industry that you know is well entrenched in the southern part of the county. Um, it's not going to work, or it could work a lot better, if we had transportation system that workers going to nighttime events could rely on to get to and from work. Or people who are wanting to attend those events, who are staying in hotels, in, in a hotel uh, on North or wherever, are wanting to go to, to some of these events. And so we, we need to think about the connection between transportation and the economy. And the needs are different in every part of the state. The economic needs are different, and strategy is different, and strengths and challenges are different. And we need a transportation system that recognizes what those needs are and is responsive to them. Uh, and right now, we are very far from that. So we need to invest more to get the system we have to a state of good repair transit systems and road and bridge, uh, roads and bridges across the state. Um, and we need, to think, um, we need to think differently about the types of transportation investments we can make to expand service, um, sometimes using existing modes, like the RTA bus service, or, or where, which could be much more helpful to the local economy, or differently. You know, I read, um, and I, um, one Berkshire uh, report on um, uh, the Berkshire Initiative's um, Berkshire Initiative Growth Big. Uh, it was a report about what we can be doing to help address some of the population loss in the area and help spur more economic growth and, and more population growth and retention here in, in uh, Pittsfield and the surrounding area. And they were talking about um, leveraging uh, ride sharing as one um, solution to address the transportation situation out here that might help um, attract more young people and uh, support the economy out here. So we need um, to invest more, we need an actual plan that recognizes the differences in every region of this state and is responsive to that and executing against that plan. Right now we've got a government that isn't serving the system we have and isn't even thinking about the system we need. Thank you. Before the next question, I want to say Alex Rzhkovsky, the director of the Pittsfield Library, 